For it is time for Member Stavis, the member from Lambton, Kent Middlesex. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to pay my respects to a friend and to a public servant who had a truly unique bond with his constituents. Mr. Speaker, there have been many tributes paid to Rob Ford. Many politicians, such as myself, and journalists have offered eulogies of one kind or another for a man who loved his family and the City of Toronto above all else. And while I like to think uh, Rob would appreciate this, I know the much more meaningful tributes have come from his family, the kids he coached, and the thousands of people who turned out to say a final goodbye at City Hall. Rob dedicated himself to being a father, son, brother, coach, and mayor. He was a champion for a lot of people who don't often find politicians in their corner. Over the last couple of weeks, I know thousands of people have been retelling their personal stories of meeting Rob, having him help them out or call them up. Those anecdotes and the bigger story they tell about a man who had a radically down-to-earth approach to public service are a powerful legacy. I admired Rob for his leadership. He stood up for everyday people and always tried to do what was right for taxpayers. His constituency work was absolutely legendary. Rob Ford was larger than life, and his loss has been profoundly felt. Our prayers and thoughts remain with Renata, Stephanie, Doug Jr., the City of Toronto, and Ford Nation. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Hamilton Mountain. Thank you, Speaker. April is Autism Awareness Month, and this government has chosen to mark it by announcing changes to autism intervention program that would deprive children of IBI after they were told they would get it. Under the new rules, IBI will not be available to children over the age of five. I have raised the issue of extensive wait lists for autism treatment before in this legislature. Not once did I expect that this government's solution would be to simply deny service to the many who are on the list. Over the past few days, I have heard from literally hundreds of families affected by this decision. Disappointed, devastated, shattered, shocked, disgusted, angry, ashamed, and scared. These are just some of the words that they've used to describe the feelings as they recount their personal stories. Many of them tell me of the startling improvement that they saw as a result of their child after the age of five with IBI treatment, and now the government is pulling the rug out from under them. In some cases, children were told within the past few weeks that IBI would be starting this month, only to be told just a few days later that because their child had reached the age of five, this was no longer the case. One parent reports that she was told just weeks ago that her son was an ideal candidate for IBI. This government needs to rethink the, about this plan and the effect that these changes will make on the children's lives who so desperately Thank need you. them. Thank you. April 1st marked the beginning of Be a Donor Month here in Ontario. Each April, the Trillium Gift of Life Network, through their Be a Donor campaign, raises awareness of the issues surrounding organ and tissue donation and those who are waiting for organ and tissue transplants. Over 1,600 people in Ontario are currently waiting for organ and tissue transplants, and unfortunately, we will lose someone every three days due to the lack of a suitable donor. With close to 30 per cent of Ontarians registering their consent to be a donor, it is clear that the people in this province care deeply about helping their friends, their loved ones, and their neighbours, but we can and must do more. Initiatives like Trillium Gift of Life's Be a Donor Month help underscore the importance of registering to be a donor, as a single organ and tissue donor can save up to eight lives. This year's campaign focuses on the reasons why people support organ and tissue donation, and, Speaker, I'm proud to say that I am a registered donor. I encourage all of my colleagues in this House and every Ontarian to lend their support to this initiative by sharing photographs of themselves, their family and friends with messages of why they support organ and tissue donation with the hashtags, hashtag my reason and hashtag be a donor. By sharing these powerful messages of love and support with our social networks, we can encourage more Ontarians to become donors. Most importantly, if you have not already done so, please take a moment to register to be a donor or, or you can do so at any Service Ontario location. It only takes a few minutes, which can help save many lives. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for the member's statements. The member from Wellington, Halton Hills. 
Mr. Speaker, more than 30 years after discussion on the Highway 6 Morriston bypass began, last week we were able to welcome the Minister of Transportation to Wellington Halton Hills as he announced the approval of this needed project. Working together, we've been pushing for the bypass for years, and I want to thank Mayor Dennis Lever, Township of Puss Lynch Council and staff, the County of Wellington, the Morriston Bypass Coalition, and many others who expressed support, including the Minister of Municipal Affairs and the Minister of Education. However, I need to remind the Minister of Transportation that there are still many other important transportation needs in Wellington Halton Hills. For example, last August, I was approached by the Town of Halton Hills about the need for a long-term truck strategy, including the possibility of a bypass on Highway 7 around Acton. We immediately went to work on it. I've approached the minister on several occasions in the legislature to discuss this issue with him and have also written to him a number of times. Last fall, I also tabled a resolution calling on the minister to place the Acton, high, sorry, Highway 7 Acton Bypass on his ministry's five-year plan for highway construction. I also arranged a meeting in January with the minister's office between the minister and a delegation from the town of Halton Hills, which include the mayor, included the mayor, Mayor Rick Bennett, and regional chair Gary Carr. The town has offered to cover half the cost of the study as an initial step towards a constructive partnership. While we all realize that an Acton bypass is not going to be built overnight, it's important that we get moving forward because we know, working together, we make progress. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. <clears throat> Further member statements, the member from London Fanshawe. Thank you, Speaker. Today, I would like to bring to the House's attention the critical status of health care delivery in London. The health care system in our city is buckling under pressures caused by lack of proper funding from this government. Recently, the system failed Sarp and Vicki Hancalli when they took their baby daughter, Alexis, to Children's Hospital for a diagnostic surgery. They were instructed to stop feeding their daughter on Sunday night for surgery Monday afternoon only to have the hospital continually push back the surgery while Alexis suffered hunger and confusion for two days. News reporters say a surgeon apologized for the delays, citing staff cuts as the reason they could not get baby Alexis into surgery on time. CBC News requested a response from the Ministry of Health, wherein the Ministry of Health distanced itself from their responsibility. The Hankali family experienced firsthand Devastating, the devastating impact of continued cuts to our health care system. London Health Sciences and St. Joseph's Hospital both announced last week that they would be forced to cut staff hours and positions due to lack of adequate funding from the province. Londoners deserve a health care system that delivers. I am calling on the Minister of Health to stop the cuts to Ontario hospitals. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Barrie. Thank you, Speaker. On Saturday, March 19, I had the privilege of recognizing the con contributions of two outstanding Barrie residents by presenting them with the Leading Women, Leading Girls uh, Building Communities Award. Shannon Murray and Susie Keyes exemplify community leadership, volunteerism, and advocacy, and have become mentors to many through their dedication to improving the lives of women and girls. A local real estate consultant, Ms. Murray is head of the Mon Mompreneurs of Simcoe County, mentoring professional women in Barrie by using her ability to build women up and support them in their business endeavours. She organized the Shoebox Project, which provides necessities to battered women and has been a longtime supporter of the Women and Children's Shelter of Barrie. Shannon has also worked with Dress for Success, a program that provides business attire for women in need who are searching for a new career. She is the recipient of Barry's Order of the Spirit Catcher and has been nominated multiple times for the Women in Business Awards. She is a passionate advocate and philanthropist focused on empowering women. Ms. Keyes, as a leader in the Indigenous community, is, in curr is currently president of the uh, Aboriginal Peoples Commission of Ontario. She also works at the Georgian Bay Native Friendship Centre, where she develops programs for children with fetal alcohol spectrum disorders, while also helping women expand their employment skills. She has put in countless volunteer hours mentoring young women, is now also involved in the Youth Quest program, demonstrating an openness and acceptance of youth. Mr. Speaker, it is a privilege to recognize the outstanding contributions of these women on behalf of the Government Great of statement. Ontario. Member statements. The member from Perth, Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today in anticipation of the fourth annual Canadian Dairy Expo. 
The Dairy Expo is taking place on Wednesday and Thursday in Stratford. It is the largest commercial dairy stage in Canada, showcasing the latest in dairy innovations. Since its inception in 2013, attendance has grown from 10,000 to over 15,000 people. It attracts farmers from across the country and the world. It's grown so much that this year there will be a new cow coliseum to accommodate the growing number of exhibitors. There is also a new innovation at the Dairy Expo. Organizers have partnered with the Dairy Farmers of Canada to run the Blue Cow Spirit Campaign. All attendees are encouraged to wear their blue cow gear to create a sea of blue traveling through the Expo. Mr. Speaker, I must say that's a great color choice. Wearing your blue cow apparel will save you $10 on your admission charge. I always enjoy attending the Canadian Dairy Expo, and I'll be there again this year. I welcome everyone to attend. I'll be serving breakfast on Wednesday and Thursday morning and touring the Expo to learn about the latest innovations. I would like to recognize Jordan Underhill, the General Manager of the Canadian Dairy Expo, and his entire team for the hard work that goes into organizing each year's event. I would also like to extend my thanks to all the volunteers who make the event possible. Finally, my thanks to the City of Stratford for their contributions to the success of the Expo. I invite you all to attend the Canadian Dairy Expo from April 6 to 7 at the Stratford Rotary Complex. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you for the member's statement. Member from York Southwestern. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in the House today to congratulate Constable Jim Lamb from Toronto Police Services 12 Division in my riding of York Southwestern on being awarded the Public Heroes Award 2016. I first met Constable Jim Lamb about nine years ago when I was first elected as an MPP. His unwavering passion to build a safer community through his work as an officer, volunteer, and community liaison became apparent to me immediately. Constable Lamb is a tireless community leader. His participation in the community at countless events throughout the years demonstrates his dedication to the residents of York Southwestern. He is a mentor to people of all ages, especially youth and newcomers. His drive and determination is admirable to all. The Public Heroes Awards started in 2011, Mr. Speaker, to recognize the outstanding service of Toronto Police, fire and paramedic services in maintaining public safety in the City of Toronto. In 2014, the scope was broadened to the entire Greater Toronto Area. The goal of the awards is to recognize the dedication and excellence of individual members of teams of members of the police, fire and paramedic services in the GTA for delivering their services in an ethnically and culturally diverse environment. Congratulations, Constable Jim Lamb, on receiving the Public Heroes Award. It is well deserved as you are a hero to many of us. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Ajax Pickering. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to stand in the House today to follow up and to acknowledge once again Grandview Children's Centre. Grandview is the only children's treatment centre in Durham Region providing ex expert pediatric treatment and rehabilitation services to well over 5,000 children and youth with special needs and their families. Grandview has been operating in the region of Durham for 63 years, and its headquarters have always been in Oshawa, and they've always done a great job. Minister of Child and Youth Services, uh, MPP McCharles, has officially announced on March 29th $333 million in new funding for autism as promised in the recent Ontario budget. We listened to families and the clinical experts that the current system was not working, and we have responded with an investment that will help more children receive critical services that they need. I want to uh, proceed and tell you that I know that Grandview's Children's Centre is very happy with this investment. In fact, Executive Director Lorraine Sunstrom-Mann has said, Grandview Children's Centre is thrilled by these significant investments in children's services. This will change the lives of families with special needs, and for families with, in Durham Region, this means getting the right services sooner. Grandview Children's Centre has much to be excited about these days, as a very recent donation from TD Bank of $200,000 dropped at a ceremonial puck drop at uh, Oshawa General Centre's hockey club at the GM Centre, and uh, the check from TD represents the largest single monetary donation ever received by Thank Grandview you. Children's Foundation, uh, and that we want to, uh, Mr. Speaker, Thank acknowledge uh, the town of Ajax for their great contribution. Thank you. 
I thank all members for their statements.